What we're going to be looking at here are property dividends. Those are distribution of assets other than cash to the shareholders of the company. Now, what we're going to specifically look at here is we're going to distribute some stock securities, and we're going to be looking at both gains and losses here on these stock securities that are being distributed as dividends to the shareholders. And for example here, Corp A here is transferred as a dividend to its shareholders here, some of its security investments in stocks. And these stocks here are being held as an investment or an asset on their balance sheet here. So uh, what we're going to we're going to be looking both here at a gain and a loss on this distribution of these uh, this this property dividend here distribution of this these securities. So for our stock securities, the carrying value or its cost is going to be sitting at two and a half million dollars here as an asset on the balance sheet. And uh, for the case one here, we're going to be looking at the stock securities where their market value here is four million and that's going to be a gain on the distribution of these um, assets here or these securities as a dividend and then our second case we're going to be looking at the stock stock securities where their market value is two million and this is where we're going to have a loss on this distribution as a dividend here to the stockholders on these securities here so the first thing we have to do here when you're declaring a property dividend you have to restate at the fair value of the property being distributed and then you have to recognize any gain or loss based on the distribution at its fair value. So for example here we're going to be looking here both uh, at the stock securities here and um, both here at a gain and a loss. So at the date of the div when the dividend is declared this is when you have to determine any gains or loss based on the fair market value. So in the case here uh, for our gain here the fair market value of these securities here are these stocks is four million dollars at the date the dividend is declared and then their carrying value here is two and a half million so the difference here uh, is going to be one and a half million and that's going to be a gain because the fair value or fair market value is greater than the carrying value now looking at our loss here this is the case where the fair market value is now two million dollars for these stocks here and again the carrying value remains the same here at two and a half million so the difference here is going to be a half a million dollar loss because our fair value here um, fair market value Value is less than our carrying value. So let's look at the first case here for a gain here. So at the date the property dividend is declared, this is what we have to do again. You restate your securities to their fair value. Rec in this case, we're going to be recognizing a gain and we're going to be reducing our retained earnings or our equity based on the uh, fact that it's a dividend here. Okay, so let's look at our accounts. We're going to have our, uh, we're going to be distrib distributing our assets here and those are the stock securities here and we have to handle those because we're going to be doing a write-up here and then we're going to be reducing our shareholders equity of the retained earnings here as a property dividend here and for our example here we're going to have plenty of retained earnings sitting here on in our shareholders equity so we're able to distribute a part of those retained earnings as a dividend here. We're going to have a credit amount here of nine million dollars and then over on our income statement we're going to have to recognize a gain on these securities. So let's go and look at these accounts one by one here. Also we're going to have these property dividends as a payable or a liability here when they're declared. So okay, so first starting with our asset or our stock securities here. This is the case where we have to write up the to their fair market value. So we have two and a half million dollars here of debit in our stock securities at their carrying value and now we have to write them up to their fair market value. So again this is where we talk about restating it to its fair market value. So we have a carrying value here at two and a half million plus that gain here of one and a half million. So now that's a write up here. The stock securities will be worth four million dollars. So what we would do is we debit our stock securities here for a half a million dollars. One and a half million dollars, excuse me. That's for a write up. So we debited that here for a half a million, a one and a half million. Now the credit balance here is going to go to our gain, gain on our securities here on our income statement. That's because they increased in value. So we credit our gain here on securities on our income statement for one and a half million dollars. So what we've done here there are two things going on here with our at the date here of the declaration of these um, this dividend here we had to first write up these securities here debit our stock securities here as an asset for one and a half million and then we would credit or recognize that gain here on our income statement for one and a half million dollars now the other thing here 
on the declaration date, we are going to take and we're going to reduce our retained earnings here and set up a property dividends liability payable here for the fair market value of those securities here. So uh, what we would do here uh, at the declaration date, we would credit or debit, excuse me, and reduce our retained earnings based on the fair market value of the securities here for $4 million. And then we would set up a payable here. So we debit property uh, retained earnings here for $4 million. And we would have credited a payable here for $4 million as a property dividend or a liability here on our balance sheet. That's, that's the declaration date. So we've taken care of our gains here based on our write-ups here of our securities that are fair value and we set up this payable here and our property dividends here credited that or in increase that here by four million dollars and that's a liability and then we would have reduced our retained earnings that's all at the declaration date and then simply when it comes down to uh okay i don't know did we talk about our fair value here on our gain on our security so uh, just to look at that here again we had four million dollars here fair value on our securities the carrying value was two and a half million so we have the gain here of one and a half million so that we if i had missed that that's what we go to go to here credit that or gain on our securities for one and a half million now uh, back to our li property dividends liability here now when it comes to the distribution date here, uh, remember we declared those dividends, we set it up as a liability here at the declaration date, credited that here for $4 million. Now at the distribution date, this is when we distribute it to the shareholders, this property dividend. So we uh, take the credit here of $4 million and we would have debited it out here for $4 million here. That's at the distribution date here. And then the balancing amount would go to our stock securities here as an asset on our balance sheet. We we would credit that here for four million dollars so we've taken care of our distribution date here reduce your assets for these stock securities here on your balance sheet by four million dollars by crediting it and then the uh, balancing amount here would reduce the liabilities here by four million dollars you would debit that here so that's how we take care of these property dividends here for gain. Recognize your gain here based uh, on your income statement and then the other point we want to point here with these gain on your income statement remember uh, the gain here on your income statement is going to flow into your retained earnings at the end of the period we ju it just sits here temporarily then at the end of the period here at the end of the year whatever period you're using it's going to flow back into your retained earnings so any gain is going to go and it's going to increase your retained earnings so that's just um, an offset here for the period so we had this uh, based on the four million dollar we would have reduced our retained earnings here based on the fair market value of those uh, div, um, of those securities here um, at the declaration here of that dividend to the shareholders here but at the end of the period here the gain that we have on those securities here would be credited out here and it would be would be credited or a debit go into your gain on securities and it would flow into your retained earnings here or increase your retained earnings. So what we normally see here is that $4 million reduction in retained earnings is actually going to be increased at the end of the period here for the half and one and a half million dollar gain. Okay, so we've taken care of our uh, gain, our st uh, property distribution here uh, looking at it as a gain okay now let's go up and look at this property distribution here as a loss here so again same numbers working with it fair market value here two million carrying value two and a half million so we're going to have a, a loss here so what we're looking at here is a loss is a half a million dollars same thing here at the date the property dividend is declared you restate your securities to their fair value and in this case we recognize a loss and we reduce our retained earnings here our shareholders equity um, by the amount of that fair value of that property dividend so looking at our where we distribute our assets here our stock securities this is the case we're going to have to write it first write it down to its fair value here so it was sitting here two and a half million dollars and we have to write it down here um, by five hundred thousand dollars for the amount of the loss here so you restate it to its fair value of carrying value here of two and a half million 
we have that loss that we have calculated here at a half a million so now we restate it here to two million dollars so that's what's sitting in the stock securities here now at the same time that we write it down to the fair market value here on our asset account here on our the first stock securities um, that credit amount here would flow over into our loss here on our income statement for the decrease in value here for those uh, stock securities. So we would debit here our loss on our income statement here for $500,000. Credit amount over here uh, reducing our st stock securities for the write down here and then the debit goes to actually increasing uh, our loss here on our income statement. Now remember that's at the date here that the dividend is declared. And then the other thing we have to do here uh, we have to reduce our retained earnings and we set up this property dividends payable again that's at the date here that is declared so we set up our liability here for two million dollars that's the fair value of that those stocks being distributed here and then we go and reduce our retained earnings here by two million dollars so debit retained earnings here by the uh, fair value of those stock securities being distributed and we set up the payable here credit that here for two million dollars and um, okay let's just look at this loss here one more time here just to understand that here so fair value it was sitting at two million dollars here at, that's at the date here the declaration here and then the carrying value was we had on the books here two and a half million so that's uh, set up our loss here for one and a half million or one a half a million dollars or five hundred thousand dollars so that is where we got our debit here loss on our securities and just remember here at the end of the period again this loss here is going to go in flow into the retained earnings here so what we would do here is we credit our take our loss here debit amount credit it out here on our loss to securities on our income statement end of the period here and then the debit would go into our shareholders equity here in this case um, it would be a retained earnings here so credit here loss on the income statement flows into is going to actually reduce our retained earnings here by the amount of that loss here okay so that's that's the case here for the case here where we have the loss it is going to reduce our retained earnings at the end of the period here then the other de uh, thing that same as before here when you have your distribution here um, at the distribution date here you have your property dividends in this case we had that two million dollars here it's fair value we would debit or reduce our property dividends here for two million dollars and then going up to our asset account here on our balance sheet here we would accredit at that the for two million dollars here so we've taken care of our our a date here of declaration where we had to recognize a loss by writing down the security here and then on the date here that you distribute it and, and again on this declaration date you reduce your retained earnings here by the amount of the fair value of those equity or stocks here and you would credit or set up your property uh, payable liability here by that same amount fair value of those uh, securities being distributed here and then at the distribution just debit out your property dividends here and go up and reduce your stock securities here or credit that here uh, for whatever the fair value of those securities okay so we've taken care of both gains and losses here when we looked at property uh, properties being distributed here as property dividends and in this case it was uh, stock securities here but uh, remember when your property dividends here you're reducing or you're distributing assets here and you're affecting your shareholders equity you're reducing your shareholders equity by uh, reducing your retained earnings based on the fair value of those assets okay so that takes care of our as our property dividends here and we looked at it in terms of some stock securities that were being distributed to the shareholders all right so that takes care of our subject now